I'd like to introduce our panel um, and have them introduce themselves and... Uh, I, I'm Diego Carrillo, I'm a junior. Grace Ovella, and I'm a sophomore. Spencer Wilson, and I'm a sophomore. I'm Amy Wayne, and I'm also a sophomore. I'm Sterling Mills, and I'm a junior. This is a thing called net neutrality, and uh, we'll pass it on down the line. So Sterling, if you'd like to start us off. So net neutrality is basically the principle that the internet should be free. And by this, we mean that when you're sending information on the internet, when it's going from one place to another, you can't, you can't touch the information in any way. It gets from one, pod, one place to another place without being interfered. Like internet service providers, they can't just like block block a website and make you pay more for it. Like, for example, like Tumblr, they can't, they can't block Tumblr and make you pay more to see like some stuff on Tumblr, and they can't slow down data. Um, it's basically the idea, net neutrality is trying to make it so that I, ISPs or internet service providers, such as like Cable One, Comcast, those guys uh, can't block content or like make certain content faster for different deals and stuff and uh, yeah. So I have that net neutrality is the principle that internet service providers must treat all data on the internet the same and not discriminate or charge differently depending on what the content or who uses it. Um, exactly like her, the concept is with net neutrality is internet providers cannot favor certain companies, websites, or products over others and restrict internet service to them. Uh, Diego, and, and we'll start with you. So we're going to share both sides. So pros for net neutrality. So the law as it is today, why would we keep it the same? And then the next slide, we'll talk about why would you, uh, why would you want to repeal it? So Diego is that the anal it enables competition. And what do I mean by competition? It allows companies to compete with each other and to try to improve upon each other. An example of this would be between uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Their concepts are all the same, and they're constantly trying to compete for people to use their stuff without, of course, them accessing the internet and having the same amount of providers. Um, another pro is, of course, that it's government regulated if you support government and believe government is just and has the interests of the people, then net neutrality is their way of saying we're willing to put up boundaries against big companies and other corporations that are, are not under our restriction. Yeah, so a lot like what Diego said, um, net neutrality is saying that we trust the government to put up these things in place so that all of the data on the internet is being treated the same. Uh, another really good point for net neutrality is that it removes the chance for censorship from ISPs. And a lot of the argument for net neutrality is based around our First Amendment rights. But, yeah. Um, so, the, basically the same thing. So that ISPs, uh, if you trust the government to uh, tell, uh, to stop ISPs from censoring content and uh, if you trust the government to uh, put up the right roadblocks, I guess, to stop people from uh, uh, making certain content faster, slower, and uh, everything that net neutrality is trying to fight. Like Diego said, like competitors could actually compete with each other because big companies they cannot block like other competitors' products or websites, and so it's all ac accessible, and and so that creates more competition. People are trying to improve the quality so they can gain customers. And another thing about net neutrality is like you can watch almost anything or view anything on the internet, and YouTubers they can make money off the internet too. Like people who make a living online, they can do that if they really wanted to. Yeah, so uh, like they said, all the information out there has to be treated the same, which in turn leads to the ability of the internet to create such great innovation. Everyone can access everything and uh, get ideas from everyone out there and uh, get inspiration from that. Thank you. So that's uh, the pros for net neutrality, leaving the laws as they are. 
Um, but we also want to bring the other side of it, the cons for net neutrality. So why would uh, the FCC or any citizen uh, want to repeal the laws that are enacted right now? So since Sterling's got it, let's hear some cons. Why would we take away uh, the laws that we have now? One of the big things that I hear is um, because not all data is the same, uh, sending a movie over the internet, it takes much, much more bandwidth than sending a simple file. Um, having to charge equally for all those services puts the uh, internet service providers at a deficit when it comes to that. The only profit, like internet service providers, they will get from from like getting making faster internet is from us, and so they have to raise the prices, and it takes a lot of cost for them. But uh, but maybe other competitors have to face those same costs too. So there might not always be a lot of competitors despite having net neutrality. Uh, one reason you might want to repeal the net neutrality laws right now is because the laws that are in place are just funky. They uh, they're they're just a little bit, you know, they're not perfect yet. They're not the best form that you could have. And uh, they uh, they also, one of the things is that a lot of people say, why would you trust just one person with uh, the ability over the internet rather than the several businesses that you could trust? Like, you have chance for less people to be corrupted in a, uh, with several people running businesses rather than just the government, like it would be easier to corrupt one source rather than multiple. Okay, I think there's two really good arguments against having net neutrality laws. Um, one of these arguments is that if we do have net neutrality, if this law does get passed for net neutrality, the government is going to have to have a way to monitor how internet service providers are basically treating all data which means there'll be more government involved in our own personal like computers, public software that might have to be put in that we don't necessarily want on there. And so I think a lot of people are concerned about privacy rights. Another thing is while they're with net neutrality laws, there's competition between people on the internet, but without them, there's competition that is created between ISP providers so that with the ISP providers, they're competing against each other so that consumers are able to have a better rate on that. So to touch on their concept of the government, uh, I did forgot to point this out in my promo that the next reality I was touching on was the United States. There is different rules and regulations for other nations across the world, such as France or Bulgaria or other nations, of course. And so the one problem with getting rid of net neutrality, or the one, yeah, the one con of getting rid of net neutrality is that Governments, you know, without them controlling their making regulations, of course, you have the businesses doing it. And that's up to interpretation if you're willing to let businesses do that. So, um, now for that, we kind of shed both sides of it. Pros for net neutrality, leaving it the same. Cons for net neutrality, re uh, re redacting it. Um, now, with your personal opinion, backed by um, facts or, or, or why you believe what you believe is if we should keep it the same as it is now or repeal it. And Diego, you got the floor. Oh, sure. uh, so I personally believe that we should keep net neutrality. There are rules and regulations, and I don't, I favor rules and regulations. I think as human beings, we should have rules set in place due to our human nature and other things that we've seen through history, such as conflicts and crises. But also believe government, in a sense, most governments that are democracies are based upon the rights of the people. And in the US, at least, we have the decision to vote who runs our government and who makes the decisions for the people as a whole. And so my opinion is if we get rid of net neutrality, it's no more as the people say. It's the those who have the power, ultimately, with big businesses and money. Who has enough cash in their mouth to give out their word? So I have been researching net neutrality since this last summer, and I think it's a good it's a good point to point out that this summer I was before an issue problem. But Mr. Stopper has write a paper with a bunch of people in my lap for our assignment, and I challenged myself to go look at articles that were specifically against net neutrality. And once I really got into it, I found myself leaning more towards it. For my paper, though, I chose to look at it from a constitutional point of view. And there's two arguments, mostly. So the for net neutrality is the argument that it's blocking our First Amendment rights and free speech. 
and blocking those. And then the other argument is that the argument that net neutrality will take away privacy rights. And what I came to the conclusion of is that because of the state action doctrine, which says that, um, which is basically the reason, like, if I raise my hand in class, Mr. Stafford doesn't necessarily have to call on me, so I don't necessarily have to say my own opinion. Because of that, what they're arguing for with net neutrality, for net neutrality, under the state action doctrine, doesn't apply because it's a private entity. I want them to repeal it, but I want it for more of like a, uh, how do we keep the net neutral position? And it's actually to take away these laws would probably help us keep the net neutral the most because right now they're just so clunky and right, what they do is they like set up uh, things where the ISPs, internet service providers, tell them, uh, have to go, uh, go to the government, tell them what they're doing, and then, um, and they have to pay fees and stuff to change stuff in their system and whatnot. And that makes it really hard on the small internet service providers all, all around the country and uh, that are trying, that they're a lot smaller than like Cable One or something that can't afford these fees as well or anything. So they don't change things as much. The innovation is stifled by the little, uh, the little companies that innovation is where they succeed the most. And also, it, um, there, I, I think net, uh, there should still be laws in place, but not the laws that we have now. The laws that I think should be in place is where the internet service providers have to tell the, the users what they are doing. What the, what, if they're making YouTube faster because YouTube has a deal with them, they have to just straight up say that to the user. And uh, also, if they're blocking content, they have to tell you that they're blocking content. They can't hide it from you. And that would make uh, corruption a lot harder because then they, if they were to do something, they would have to tell you and then you could choose not to go to that internet service provider. Or if they have a monopoly, you can lower your plan or you, you're basically voting with your dollars like you would in every other form of, every other place in capitalism and uh, people can cause changes in the companies that are doing terrible things. So that uh, new and creative and like better solutions come out and uh, companies that are more truthful and want what is actually best for the people uh, succeed. Well, my opinion on net neutrality would be like we should save it because there are a few people online that, that make money off the internet, like they, they entertain people, they do what they love on the internet, for, for, and that's their living. And so that's kind of one reason why I really wanted to support net neutrality, because we, we, the content they make, they're happy doing that, and that's their, their life dream. And so I, I just see it that as a big benefit of net neutrality, and, and we could, and even though like the laws of net neutrality right now, they aren't perfect, we could still work on getting the government less regulation. We ourselves could help regulate the internet towards a better net neutrality instead of the laws we have right now. When we're talking about the uh, vote that's going to happen on Thursday, I believe which we sh that we should save net neutrality. Um, however, I do not think that the laws which we have now are perfect. They very much um, cause problems for telecommunications or ISPs. They have a lot of things that they have to work around. I have a um, a short document here uh, from some of the founders of the internet, the people that in, that were at the head of creating it and shaping it and making it become what it is today. Uh, right here, it says. Um, the proposed order removes long-standing FCC oversight over internet access providers without an adequate replacement to protect consumers, free markets, and online innovation. I think that's really my problem with the FCC's proposal right now, is that there's nothing that they're giving to protect consumers and free markets and this online innovation. So do I love the laws which we have now? No, but I think that they're better than nothing. Thanks, you guys. Um, 
Before we move on to questions, would you guys mind giving these guys a round of applause? They volunteered their time right now. Classes, uh, Sterling, Spencer, and Diego are in AP Computer Science Principles, and Amy and Carissa are in Exploring Computer Science. So different uh, different levels, different grades, and um, all, all the same topic. So I really appreciate them tackling this and, and going on. But if you guys have any questions for any one of the uh, panel members or just anyone in general, we'd love to hear from you guys and any questions that uh, we could potentially answer for you. So, <clears throat> for the people who are more for repealing net neutrality, do you think that by repealing it, we it has the ability to um, have censorship like they do in more communist states like North Korea or China? I think that there is an opportunity for censorship on both sides of the situation. I think if you look at it, where we repeal it, there is the opportunity where internet service providers are going to slow down different websites, and that could cause censorship. But I also think that if we have net neutrality, while it does seem free, if the government is getting more involved, like in those communist states, where the government has gotten so involved with their internet that there is censorship, let's say someone puts out something that's anti the government, and the government who has the laws in place is the one who's monitoring this, sees it and says, oh, we don't like that. What's to say now that they have the software on our computers that they're not going to be like, oh, well, who's going to notice? Well, if we're just, since we already have software, why don't we just slow this website on ourselves? Like, that's what I see it as. Also, um, the government doesn't have to compete with anyone. So if they wanted to censor something, they could. And the, uh, no one is going to be like, oh, I'm changing uh, my government now that you censored this because I hate that you blocked YouTube. Uh, but if you're like a company and say I was Cable One and I blocked YouTube, ev uh, not everyone, but a lot of people, enough to make me worry, would switch internet providers or down my or choose a smaller plan or give me less money, which makes me weaker as a company, which makes therefore my competitors stronger. And so, if I blocked YouTube, everyone would be mad at me, and I would lose. But if I were to be the only one to not block YouTube, people would flock to me, and I would be, become one of the major companies, which would, uh, so it basically allows it to compete. Sure, they would start to try and censor things, but in the end, the competition will force them to do what the people want. Thank you, Rad. Great question. Other questions from anyone? Um, Sterling, you talked about a vote that was going to take place. I was wondering who, like, what the vote on and who was making that decision. The vote is to appeal the current net neutrality protections that we have. It's going to occur on Thursday. The people that are voting are the FCC chairman. The FCC stands for the Federal Communications Committee. Um, that's going to be held on Thursday. So, and that's why actually, I think one of the reasons why we're having this is because uh, all of us can actually get involved. We can all email our representatives, email the FCC chairman. There's many ways you can get involved either side of the argument you follow on. So that kind of leads in, into this. Um, I do want to let you know that there are two sides to this argument, and I think that the panel did a great job expressing uh, both. And ultimately, it isn't up to um, the population that can vote. It is the FCC vote, but you can still influence um, our, our elected members of Congress. So uh, this is a short link, but so if you want to take action, you can visit the following website. It's called gofccyourself.com, uh, and you'll have to press the uh, plus express, and that will get you to a form that you can contact the FCC directly. Um, also, uh, battleforthenet.com, I will tell you it is very biased and it is for uh, keeping net neutrality laws intact and so they have a, a script already written that, that expresses that opinion. If you feel um, like you are against, uh, or if you feel like you want to repeal 
uh, net neutrality, you, all you have to do is just change change that format into a vote. Um, unless anyone has a uh, uh, another question. I've got a fellow question for my fellow panel people. <laughs> okay. So uh, I wanted to bring this up. So as recently as 2012, um, Comcast actually did try to do something that was interesting that uh, governments like the United States took into consideration with the net neutrality, which in 2012, Comcast started to slow down files being shared across the internet to speed up their own providers. They are basically stopping people between nations and just slowly tweaking their files a bit so that it would take a really long time for them to get but that internet is going to them and supporting whatever they need to do. So I wanted to know for my final panelists if if we get rid of net neutrality and Comcast or other companies decide to do this, um, and you believe that the big businesses will hopefully stop them with the word of the people, uh, what is to say that the, who's going to control the big businesses if they don't care about the people? Big businesses will, uh, the people will control the big businesses. If there's several big businesses, so it, if Comcast tried this, people would leave Comcast. They would go to Cable One and to the other ones. And so Comcast would not like this. And that's why I'm for new net neutrality rules where they have to tell the people what they're doing. Because Comcast kind of did this secretly and didn't tell anyone. And people had to kind of figure it out. And that's what the big issue was, is that uh, if I don't know that Comcast is actually slowing down my content, then I can't leave because I don't like that because I don't know what's happening. But if I know what's happening, if uh, the government tells Comcast that they have to tell everyone that they're slowing down these files and stuff, that then I would figure that out and I could go somewhere else with my dollars and so could everyone else or I could stop paying them. Let's time out for a second. We got less than a minute left, you guys. Um, can we get one more round of applause for these guys? Thank you guys so much and please your own research. There's tons of resources out there. If you need me, let me know. Uh, but let's clean up, pack up our lunches, and. Uh